Apple's November 10th Mac event just finished, and let me tell you guys, I am blown away by the numbers that Apple gave us, and I'm extremely excited because we've already ordered four of these new Macs. We got one MacBook Air, two MacBook Pros, both of the models, and the Mac Mini. So if you guys wanna see all of our in-depth testing and comparison videos, subscribe right now so you don't miss out, and please help us reach our goal of 500K subs by the end of the year. Now, most of you guys out there are probably only gonna order one of these new Apple Silicon Macs, and with them being available to order right now, it's a really tough choice to make, but if you watch this full video all the way to the end, I'm confident that you'll make up your mind. So before we get into the buyer's guide portion of this video, let's talk about the eight mistakes you should avoid when buying your new Apple Silicon Mac. For avoiding mistake number one, be sure to buy the amount of memory that you need out of the gate because it is no longer user replaceable on the Mac mini like it used to be just like it is on the MacBooks. So if you think you'll be doing productivity work, you should probably go for 16 gigs of memory for another $200. Now for mistake number two, don't think that you have to pay Apple's premium for these storage upgrades. Since all of these Macs come with Thunderbolt 4 ports, you can buy super fast external SSDs like the two terabyte Sabrent Extreme Q, which is our favorite SSD ever, for only $360 compared to $800 for Apple's two terabyte storage upgrade. However, be very cautious because you can actually make mistake number three if you're not careful. All of these new Apple Silicon Macs only have two Thunderbolt ports ports, even the Mac mini, which used to come with four. And the best external SSDs use one of those Thunderbolt ports. And on top of that, the Mac mini no longer has the option of upgrading to a 10 gigabit ethernet port. So you'll have to use an adapter if you want that, which takes up another one of those Thunderbolt ports. And same thing for those who wanna to connect to a Thunderbolt display. So if you know you might be using those two ports, it'll be a good idea to actually pay for internal storage. For mistake number four, if you're thinking of playing games or doing productivity work on your new Apple Silicon Mac, it may be a bad idea to go for the MacBook Air because it comes with a completely fanless design. Because of that, longer workflows that use the graphics, like playing high-end games, like Genshin Impact, could cause it to gradually heat up over time. And there's a chance it could throttle down the power since we don't know how good the thermal performance is just yet, but we're definitely gonna be testing it out. In those cases, it'll definitely be a better idea to go for the MacBook Pro or the Mac Mini, which both come with a cooling fan. However, be sure to avoid mistake number five, because if you're mainly gonna be browsing the web and using common apps, the MacBook Air is the best choice because it's gonna be completely silent all the time. And those common tasks, won't cause it to heat up that much. So a lot of the iPhone and iPad apps that we can now finally run on any of the new Apple Silicon Macs should run nice and cool on the MacBook Air. And even things like photo editing or other workflows that require short bursts of power should be fine with the fanless design. Now that actually brings us to mistake number six. Don't think you have to buy the MacBook Pro if you want the best performance. You can actually get the same exact M1 chip with all the cores enabled on the Air if you want to, and the less expensive Mac Mini as well. And if your work happens in short bursts, you shouldn't see any throttling due to heat. On top of that, the Air now has the same color accuracy as the Pro, finally getting P3 wide color gamut support, so it's perfect for photo editing. Now mistake number seven is probably one that you're not expecting. If you want the best battery life in any MacBook, the Air is no longer the one to buy. In previous years, the Air used to have two hours more battery life compared to all of the other MacBooks, but now it's actually flipped. Because the MacBook Pro has a larger battery and it uses the same chip, it now gets up to 17 hours of web browsing battery life. That's two hours more compared to the Air, and that's actually a massive seven hours more than the previous 2020 Intel MacBook Pro, which is absolutely incredible. And finally, for mistake number eight, while the Mac Mini looks like an excellent deal at just $700, keep in mind that it doesn't come with the display, 
or a mouse or a keyboard. And by the time you buy all those other things, especially a decent color accurate display, you could end up over the $1,000 price of the MacBook Air. So keep that in mind. Now with all of those mistakes out of the way, let's get into exactly who should be buying each one of these new Apple Silicon Macs. If you want the absolute least expensive Mac there is out there, the Mac mini is the one to buy. And the new Apple Silicon chip is gonna make it perform incredibly well compared to other desktop PCs. The Mac mini is perfect for those who already have a mouse, a keyboard, and a display on hand so it ends up being a much less expensive option. This is also great for photo editors who may already have a very nice and expensive color accurate display and maybe even an HDR display, which you don't get with the MacBooks. So this will make it a killer Mac for video editing as well, since you have the fan to keep it cool and the M1 chip gives you so much graphics performance. But on the flip side, it's a great choice for the regular Joe who just wants a reliable computer. And at $700, it's probably the best choice you can make if you want to replace an old Windows desktop computer that's starting to slow down due to virus issues and other things like that. The Mac mini won't have any of these issues, especially now that the M1 chip gives you even better security and reliability. And you get the added bonus of up-to-date specs like Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and on top of that, all of these new Macs have the ability to run iPhone and iPad apps, which is gonna be incredible. Now, of course, not everybody wants to be limited to a desktop computer. So let's get right into the new MacBooks, which you can take on the go, starting with the new Air. At a starting price of $999, it's gonna be extremely popular, since this is gonna be the most reliable MacBook Air that Apple has ever created. The combination of the price tag the reliability, the quick and snappy performance of the M1 chip, and the completely fanless design makes it the best choice for people working from home. This includes everything from web browsing, streaming video, being on Zoom calls with absolutely no fan noise, using document apps like Word, Excel, and business apps as well. The Air is perfect for all of those things, and it'll even satisfy the needs of those who like to occasionally use performance apps, like some video and photo editing. And it's actually the absolute best choice for students as well, since you can get it for only $899, and it's by far the most portable MacBook that Apple has to offer, giving students everything they need for their school work. And they can play some casual iPhone and iPad games on the side if they'd like to as well. Now the MacBook Pro is for those who want long-standing extended performance on the go. The base $1,300 model comes with the eight core graphics right out of the gate, unlike the MacBook Air. So it's the best choice for those needing graphics performance. This makes it perfect for things like video editing, since the fan is gonna keep it cool while editing 8K ProRes video like Apple showed off during the event. And for high-end users like that, I would definitely recommend going for 16 gigabytes of memory. The built-in fan also makes the MacBook Pro the best choice for gamers, since you know that it'll stay cool during extended gaming sessions especially for higher-end competitive games like Call of Duty Mobile, which you should be able to play using a controller, or even games like Genshin Impact, or anything coming in the future like League of Legends Wild Rift. The Pro also gets some extra bonus features like the built-in touch bar, a larger trackpad, a brighter 500 nit display compared to 400 on the air, studio quality microphones, better speakers with high dynamic range, a larger 61 watt power brick compared to 30 on the air, and of course, an extra two hours of battery life. And for a lot of people, those things are definitely worth the extra $300 compared to the air. So there you guys go. Hopefully this video helps you make a decision on which Apple Silicon Mac to buy. And if it did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe because we're getting those Macs in next week. But if you're still confused, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'm gonna help you out with your specific situation. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Uh, wait, 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 stop, hang on, wait. Uh, one more thing, hi, I'm a PC. I'm fast, I'm still fast, check it out.